welcome to the Dimp Digital Podcast. We're on episode number 69, and this time you've got myself, Apps, and Mr. Piper. Pep, how are you doing? Hello, yeah, I'm doing well. You? Yes, not too bad, thanks. It's, uh, it's been a little while since we've had you on, so we might as well have a quick catch-up whilst we're here. What have you been What have you been up to? Have you still been dab- dabbling in little bits and pieces? Uh, I, I know, I've definitely been dabbling in some little bits and pieces, so I've been playing a bit of Tierra. Yeah, with, with yourself. Um, well, I've been haven't trying. Put, <laughs> I haven't put lots of hours into it, but a good amount where I've gone off and started my own sort of like uh, world away from where I've been playing with you. Yeah, um, and sort of building up resources now. It's it, it, it's very Minecraft, but very sort of like eight bit like. Um, yeah. My my goal set behind that is I want to unlock a world boss yeah. um, and just do a big big battle with that. Um, and it's it's quite interesting. I think there's more to it than 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 maybe when we started playing it than we actually understand. So yeah. I found like a, a dungeon the other day in a tree. So there was a huge tree which had a door to it. Yeah. And I went down this tree all the way into the bottom of the earth, and yeah, it, there's a dungeon down there. It's pretty cool. Cool. So that is that is something to take your mind. It's something quite light that you can just sort of jump in, jump out of. Yeah. Is it um. One thing I said, it said we we played for a little while the first night, and I have not gone back to it since, which is poor from me. So you've, that's why you've obviously got annoyed and started your own world, <laughs> thinking not dealing with this slow. But I remember you mentioning the good thing is that all the stuff you'd collected from our our sort of joint world, you were then able to take into this new world. So it's um it's yeah. not, you've not had to resettle your progress at least. Yeah, that that that's, that was the really interesting part for me was that we could go off and like we were just messing around mm. and then all those resources that we'd gathered and that I had in my inventory, yeah. I hadn't lost and I just took it across to the, my next world. So sure. it, it gives you an idea that if you land on a world and you, you're in a world that you really like and you're like, oh, I want to build my house around this area, but I don't want to destroy the terrain too much. Yeah. You can go off and then create other worlds where you literally go and destroy the terrain and right. you go off and, you know, real do real big mine expeditions and stuff Pick like that. Clean. Yeah, exactly. And you can then come back to your sort of home base world where you can build, I don't know, like a starship or you can build like undercooked cave cabins and or starship. houses well you know it's, it's like minecraft isn't it you can build yeah. a starship it doesn't mean it's going to be a starship no, it's well, not like um uh, what's it called starcraft it's, yeah. not, it's not starcraft what's Star it called? Bound, starbound it? that's it yeah. yeah that's what i meant um but equally it's, it's starbound and this is this are very similar but it is it's i that was a really interesting thing for me was that you could take your inventory across worlds and that that yeah. was good because it meant I wasn't starting my own world again, and like, oh, all that time I spent with you was lost. I was like, oh, that's that's nice. Yeah. So it means when you cut, you can then, if you decide to come back on, yeah, I'll you come. can bring your stuff over to my my world, and we can, we'll um, be a lot further on, and you'll be able to gear yourself up, and you can just throw all this stuff in the chest. Yeah. So one of my problems when we played this is we played it for that first night, and then yep. I never went back to it. I was, and I was saying to you in the, in the next day, I, I didn't really understand what I was what the end goal was. And I know that in obviously Minecraft, there was no real end goal as such for a long time until they introduced mm-hmm. like the ender dragon. It was just, it was more about your creativity. And I didn't get that same pull on this because it was a bit 2d. Um, you don't obviously, when you're building a 3d house, it feels a little bit more personal and you can customize it a lot. more. So I felt like it was lacking that edge. Did you have to go away and read up on, on what to do in, in Tieria or was it something that, that you just sort of as while playing the game, you got a better idea of what was going on? No, it's, it's it's well playing it, and I, I think we probably didn't give it the biggest uh, the biggest uh, sort of amount of time when we first sort of put it on. Yeah. Um, so most of it's about me just sort of playing it and finding out as I go along. Um, so around some of the world bosses, I've read up how to like sort of try and activate them. Um, right. There's certain points you need to get to, and sure. certain things you need to collect. But um, I've sort of started in terms of the personalization bit that you were just talking about there. Yeah. Like where we we're thinking, oh, there wasn't much, but there is when you start you can start unlocking things like toilets and cupboards <laughs> and stuff like that yeah. that you can build just to really sort of personalize uh, these houses and so forth so um hopefully you could build like a, a, a i don't know a big castle with several several rooms or something yeah. like that um which each room has a different different thing the un- one thing i haven't got to a point yet um and I'm, as, as i said i'm still pretty early game in this is that you're meant to meet other NPCs. Yeah. When you start your first one, there's an NPC right by you. Yeah. However, um, I've not yet come across another NPC, which I can say, oh, wait, come back to my gaff and uh, yes. ha- have another room. So maybe I-, I need to still be putting a bit more time into that. So I think it's probably one of those ones that 
I mean, if, if you want to, like once and once an evening a week, just jump on for for two hours and just yes, you know yes. just do an, an evening of sort of maybe sort of collecting resources, and an evening of just the next week, just maybe like right, we're going to build uh, this room here for like seven people, yeah, and, sure. and then maybe another time we go right, we need to sort of get ourselves geared up in this 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 yeah. one, and then another one we go off and say right, we're going to go and explore, um, and sort of leaping back to. Um, no man sort of sky i sort of want to get myself any link (laughs) any link to no man's sky i'll get in i will but the the reason i'm sort of the area was was sort of key for me was i wanted to be playing a game where they it wasn't holding my hand and there wasn't a real hard story around it uh so then i'm in that mind frame of being like right i need to this is this is my own story yeah Yeah. rather than being like uh, a game like a gta and stuff like that where you've got objectives to go off to sure. um because uh, we know we're not going to have that in in no man's sky there's going to be a rich backstory but there's not going to uh, and lore but yeah. we have to find out ourselves and do it on our own time so yeah the whole reason that tiara appeals to me at the moment is is, is because of that as well yeah yeah um, one one thing before we close down terry i'm always just you mentioned there's different world bosses yes w- one thing that i can i can't grasp yet is how do you select, and this is my memory failing, do you, can you select, is, is the world boss randomised per world that you do? or No, I think you can get all the world bosses in any of the world. You just have to get to either like the right area or the right level or the right combination of uh, items to put together to maybe create a oh. beacon to summon that, summon that world boss. So you, so essentially you, you could have one large world and go through all the bosses in there if you knew the exact items and the exact hoops you had to jump through yes yeah, it's yeah, not exactly. like it's assigned a world boss and you only unlock that one you can do it you just gotta do a different combination essentially yeah 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 so so it might be uh, like i don't know like I, I said i'm not far enough through the game and, and i probably haven't read as much into it as i should have but it might be like you need to get i don't know a cauldron and in that cauldron you, yeah. uh, you might need to put a toilet i don't know some rope or right. some hair or, or some i don't know some leather and some stuff bullshit like that, ritual which going then, on yeah or I, don't, I don't know if it's that where you just craft <laughs> something at a desk and then you create a beacon and then you put that beacon down and it summons this uh this world boss and obviously you're going to be like oh right i need to right. if i'm going to summon this world boss i want to summon it well away from my oh, yeah, you my, my base <laughs> yeah, you um, I've done that once on um, Starbound because I played Starbound as well before yeah. it's a game that you got me actually yeah. um, and I still think it's a great game and I'm looking forward to when that hopefully comes as well onto the Playstation 4 because I'll, I'll definitely be getting that on the PS4 yeah. but um, there's one part in that where you, you build this beacon and you summon the first world boss oh, in Starbound. And I just sort of did it. I didn't really sort of know what I was doing. And I did yeah. it right by my house and it came along and pretty much my whole house was destroyed. And it it left me in tatters because <laughs> all that work I'd put in has just it's been ruined. So I was like, right, I'll never do that again on one of these type of games. No, <laughs> that is that is a trouble. If you don't know what you're doing, you can you can sting yourself. There are there obviously are a lot of similarities between Tieria and uh, and Starbound because I believe some of the devs working on either or have moved over and started doing Starbound so you can I can see the influence having just seen you play Starbound and then playing Tieria myself I can see the influence between both of those games there but um, two to look out for if you're interested in that sort of crafty uh, make your own story type of thing There's, they, they are they are quite interesting but the, the main reason you are here and uh, the reason why I've requested your presence because I do feel like and you may disagree, but <laughs> you've got a good nose for what publishers are doing when it comes down to, I don't know, like their release schedule, delays, when when reviews are allowed out, and other bits of kind of like marketing tactics that they employ. You always bring a different perspective on it, something that I never tend to think of. And the reason why it's relevant this week and has been relevant in the last couple of weeks is because we've had the likes of both Doom and Overwatch release uh, and on day one, consumers have not had a review to reference. So both Bethesda and Blizzard have, have dropped the code to the media outlets late or on the day, or they've put an enforced embargo up. I think it's the code in this case, but the, you know, an embargo is something that they can mm-hmm. and do, do employ, which I've seen happen with the Assassin's Creed games. And typically, for me, when this happens, when on day one, when you get, when you go on Tuesday morning or whenever, whenever it goes out, then there's no reviews out. To me, typically, it's a red flag because, in my mind, it means that 
publishers aren't confident in their product and they they don't want any negative re- reviews coming out that might hurt the sales of it. Now, post-release, ironically, having looked at the reviews that are out there for both these games, they're both getting scored pretty well. So, it, you know, they, they're both seemingly good games if you were to listen to, like, a Metacritic score or, or whatnot. And I know that you've previously said in a lot of games that are coming out apart from no man's sky it's been <laughs> it's been I'll, I'll wait for a review before deciding on whether to get that so is yeah. it is, is just as a consumer as someone who you know buys video games a few a few a year is it frustrating for you that if a game's come out and there isn't a review on day one that you can't you've got nothing to reference um from a personal viewpoint mm. um I, I don't for me I wouldn't see that being an overly big thing. I, I think I know if I was if it was a, if I was about buying a game on day one, yeah. I know I'm buying that game no matter what the reviews say. And there's very few games that I sort of do it with. Yeah. Um, as I said, like the No Man's Skies, the GTAs, mm-hmm. hopefully the Red Dead Redemption if that decides to drop at some point, yeah. which there is a rumour going around about that. Exactly. Uh, um so uh that I, I'm pretty much stable and I probably wouldn't have a chance to look at the reviews for those. And I've already sort of pre-ordered those. Yeah. Um, it's the games that I'm a little bit like, I'm not sure whether I'm going to buy it day one. I'm going to see what my friends might buy. Right. Um, and I might see what, uh, yeah, a couple week later, how big the uptake is to whether I'd be like, oh, right, I'll go out and buy that. Cause the reviews are, the reviews are coming in quite good. So, um, I, I, yeah, looking at these two as well, it, it is an interesting case. With um, Overwatch, um, mm-hmm. I, I believe it's probably less so of a um, of an uh, of a problem mm-hmm. and because the beta that they they'd released, yeah. um, they basically turned around to everyone saying, right, the, the full game's going to be exactly the same as this. Yeah. We've decided yeah. we're not going to change it. So yeah. if 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 the review if that I don't understand why a reviewer couldn't then drop a a review on it just because they haven't seen the full game. They can say, right, this is based on what the company have said, yeah. and and we can drop our reviews now. We will update this if if it turns out not to be true. So I I, I personally think maybe the reviewers um, missed something there. Yeah, um, I, on, on, yeah. On, on 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 Overwatch um, equally, we all know Overwatch is probably going to do well. It's, it's a massive. Uh, what I'd call a fanboy type game in mm. terms of it, it, it's Blizzard. Um, and if yeah. you're a Blizzard fan, you're going to just, you're going to be all over it. It doesn't matter what Blizzard do. You <laughs> love their games. And it's, 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 and I'm not a fanboy or a Blizzard, Blizzard fan. And I play a few Blizzard games, but I wouldn't say like I'd jump and go crazy for that. But I, I, this was a game that I was a little bit excited about. Um, mm. I, I don't often watching some of the, the because I went onto Twitch and watched some sure. sort of like live streams of it and watching yeah. people play, I realised it probably wasn't the game that I thought about in my head. So I was thinking more sort of Team Fortress, yeah. um, where it's a lot more heavily where you're around, you're a medic or you're a bomb disposable person or something yeah. like that. It is, it is more of that actual that FPS uh, type of game with with, the, with those other sort of things brought in, but not as heavy as I'd hoped. Mm. So, um, but with Overwatch, yeah, I, I feel like the reviewers missed something there. Doom, yeah. on the other hand, I feel that was tactically dumb. Yeah. Um. So I, they weren't getting great reviews from the the multiplayer. No, um. No. I must admit, I played the beta for that. Um. You I, did. I about, yeah. Yeah. Bloody one hell. one or two games I played for that. Um. <laughs> and I didn't really enjoy it. It was it was far too. Uh, maybe I needed to give it time, but it, yeah. for me, it was far too fast paced. It, it just didn't <laughs> feel like what doom used to be or what i remember it used to be in uh, and maybe that was the problem um yeah. so uh, i think they realized that they were playing with something that was quite dear to a lot of people's hearts within doom uh, yeah. and a lot of people would have just gone out and brought doom for the sake of like right this is going back going to be going back to my childhood like if they redid yeah. a remake of goldeneye for example sure so if they had let the reviewers come out and the reviews weren't so great all the people that would have just just seen it the day one right i need to go and get doomed go back to my childhood yeah wouldn't have brought because i said oh that all the reviews of that are rubbish so i think they were a little bit worried as yeah. you said they, they needn't be because the campaign seems to have gone down like an absolute storm yeah and people were people were loving that so um but maybe yeah, maybe there was that hesitation um equally they they, they may have seen doom as as a big game for them this year mm. however maybe not as big as some of their other games that they released so sure. maybe they were just trialing a new form of way to to 
drop releases, uh, yeah. drop reviews, and then maybe just uh, like what we do sometimes in 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 the technology world um, where I work, we we do things to see to get data from it and see how sure. it reacts. And actually, that might they might be saying right, is this a better way to do this moving forward for other games? Yeah. Um, and then they, they they might have said right, maybe we can sacrifice some of the sales of Doom by not releasing the reviewers. Early. Yeah. 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 I mean, do you think ultimately? If you if you think you've got a bit of a stinker, it's a smart business decision to to hold back reviews or to put an embargo on it or to send out the code late. Um, bearing in mind, you've got something like Uncharted Four, which came out, reviewed about five or so days early, got great reviews, and there's been the top of the UK charts for the last two weeks. Although I expect to be dislodged next week by Overwatch, but yeah. it managed to hold off Doom, which come out. On the Friday later, so we, we looked to the, the, the week just past, and, or the week before last, rather, when it had a full week head-to-head, and it still managed to hold off Doom in, in some way, which is pretty good considering it's only on PS4. So do you think that business-wise, if you, if you were in that position, would you, would you look at holding back a review if you thought that it might go a little bit wrong? Yeah, no, 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 definitely. I would be looking. They, they, they would have strategically looked to this and said, um, right, what else are we going up and head to head with? What potentially right. could affect our sales? Yeah. Is so? Is someone that potentially wants to get? Uh, maybe that maybe it's someone that's only got enough money which like a lot of people out there right it's one month we can only get i can only buy one game yeah i've got the choice of buying doom or uncharted and you know what i'm swaying at the moment more towards doom yeah. i'm going to get that on its release date i'll hold off from uncharted yeah um and i'll get that um a bit later down the line because everyone will be on in my head maybe everyone will be on doom playing multiplayer when it first comes out yeah um, I mean, if i release it early um and that, that are to reviewers and they put bad reviews, I as a consumer are going to be like, well, actually, that, that's not so good. Maybe I'm going to put my money into Uncharted yeah. rather than rather than Doom. So I think they've strategically sort of looked at that, uh, planned it, what's happened around them and said, right, we're probably actually going to get more sales if we just we, we build the marketing up around it, you know, the hype up around it. But we yeah. don't let the reviewers be able to drop their reviews until a, a day or two after the um, actual release. Yeah, no. I mean, their actual their actual excuse for Fezzes was that, oh, we want the uh, we want to make sure that everyone's all the reviewers are able to play the multiplayer in its live state as it should be. You know, we don't we don't put it to go up sort of half baked, and there's not enough people on the servers because there's, there's an interactive kind of like I think it's called Snap Map or something yeah. like that where you can you can build your own sort of scenarios and whatnot. So they wanted that to be out in the wild before that, but uh, it's it's ironic that that's the one section that everyone's pretty much complained about and so it's not very good as the multiplayer but yep. the stuff that they kept hidden all this time all the way up until release we'd seen one trailer of the story campaign is the thing that everyone's raving about saying it's a breath of fresh air it it, it kind of has throwbacks to the original doom you know it doesn't doesn't completely bastardize it and it brings some new interesting concepts and that was the one thing they kept hidden before before release strange yeah it's strange there there, there, there will be reasons and there'll be people they would be Bethesda are a huge company. They'll yeah. have st- a strategic team around releasing things and why they're doing it. Sometimes yeah. I must admit, like in every business there is in the world, um, because that's what it, we have to look at this at the end of the day is yeah. Bethesda are a business. They're out to make yeah. money. They'll have these strategic teams or strategy teams to, to uh, marketing teams, how they best to do it. And sometimes they just make mistakes. Um, yeah. They don't release things in the be- best way. Um, you would hope that if they feel like actually this probably didn't work for doom then, yeah. then maybe they should take that on board and and, and not do that for other games no. however i don't I, I don't know yet the figures behind doom and whether they it's actually exceeded what they they thought they were going to do yeah. on day one we'll never know will we? we'll never know but yeah it's it's you know it's it was i think it was second in its first week it's second again this week and then yep. next week is typically drop off time you know, two weeks, two and a half weeks after release, you'll see stuff go from first or second down to like 14th. And you think, yeah. Christ, people, that's it now. It's hit its critical mass that early and it won't it won't get another revival. But it kind of begs the question that if they're happy to sacrifice having any reviews out on the day, you know, are, are old school typical media reviews as important as they once were? You know, with the likes of YouTube live streams and other ways for people to make their judgment do you think they they hold as much 
you know, much of the keys they used to, because it used to be back in the day with just magazines. You had nothing. You had no internet, yeah. nothing. Nowadays, you've got, as you said, you've got open beaters going on. You've got people streaming. You've got your favourite YouTube personality playing stuff sometimes early as well. Yeah. Are, are these... Are these now almost overtaking the, the the old school? Just you know, people look at review and decide based on that. I I, th- I think there's that there is a there is still a place out there for the old sort of school sort of review. So you're working for I don't know PC Gamer or IBM, or, uh, yeah. um, not IBM, IGN, IGN yeah. cracky, and um, you're you're putting together a a score for that game and you're reviewing it. Mm. However there is as you're right there's plenty more mediums out there now where they can get their game out and get it to the audience and they're aware of that so they as you said that they would target certain youtubers where they'll pay the money to play the game yeah. there will be certain twitchers that they will get to live stream yeah. their game uh they, they, they'll live around, stream it himself sometimes uh, uh, <laughs> exactly yeah so it's um if they can get their game up there on the, the Twitch leaderboards, that'd be brilliant. They, a lot of these games as well, they, they, especially ones, the multipliers, they try and get it around an e-sport as well. So they try and yeah. get sports teams, go, uh, not sports teams, but you know, um, like players actually playing it and yeah. having a competition. So putting together a competition to make it an e-sport and yeah. therefore can, that drives consistency uh, and it drives more longevity for that game instead yeah. of it dying straight off. I must admit, Doom to me strikes me as a game that in about a month or two, it's going to be about £20 rather than the, the £50. <laughs> Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I it's it's there's so many more mediums out there. Um, they, they maybe that the review itself isn't as in, as vital as as other things now. But yeah. I feel it still has has a place. Well, we we look at it. So mm. there's, if we're looking at it and we're looking at Metacritic and all stuff like that, yeah. um, there's going to be there's going to be other, there's going to be th- hundreds of thousands of other people looking at scores as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for you, is it is 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 a review typically the way you're like you said is the game you're on the fence about and you weren't going to get day one is that how you'll judge it or is it more about seeing the game actually play or 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 that type of thing you know what it's i i say i wait for the review but i i am one of these people that don't wait for the score review i i I don't that i sort of skip over that i wait for a review from someone that i trust um in terms of like as obviously number one source that's where you go to straight away (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and then and, and you guys so i will talk to you if you played it and so forth if mm. you haven't i will wait for uh, a trusted other a youtube channel that i might watch to, yeah. to play it or someone on youtube that i know wouldn't be taking the piss and just just right. pay to do that type of review yeah um so i i, I saw a I if I think something's going to be good and, and other people are saying yeah yeah I'm enjoying this then and it's people that I like to watch on YouTube watch on Twitch yeah. you guys are playing it then then I I'll trust that and I'll go with that so I a, a high score to me do, doesn't mean that I'm going to go out and buy it so for example the one we can look at is is I you guys have all gone out and brought um brought uncharted and you guys are saying it's absolutely brilliant apparently it scored like 90 odd percent i i wouldn't have even known that i wouldn't have even looked to that no. uh, but because you guys are saying it's it's really good it's it's it you'll love it because of you love the the last of us yeah. i will go out and get that game i right. won't go and get that game now i want to wait until i've done my no man's sky i had to drop that one in again <laughs> but i will go out there uh, when i'm a little bit bored and and have that as my story based game yeah. where i can get it because you guys and I, I trust you guys from what you've said i, I it's not because it's got the the score so no. yeah the these the the bethesda's and the other uh, production companies and and yeah. developers are, are are aware of that for sure yeah yeah i mean if you look at just talking about uncharted 4 great game one thing i would say that which will which will be music to your ears is that uh if you look at it and it's bare bones it's not overly complex it's very casual you know any, i think anyone can pick up that game and play that and do well at it so sounds you, like the perfect type of game for me then yeah yeah it's very you know although it's not linear in the way it plays it's you know you're not going to get lost for hours going what the hell do i have to do it will it will help you out where it needs to and the combat and stuff is just so easy to pick up and play that anyone could you know, from the age of like ten upwards, lower than that probably these days would be able to play that game and have a good time of it. But is is, is it, I get all right. I've got one question about mm. uh, Uncharted. Is there is there any racing scenes? No racing. Yeah, that's that's it. I'm spoiler. Okay. No I, racing. <laughs> that that's that's my biggest gripe in games like that. Like you're playing that type of game and then suddenly you're like 
thrown into a race and then yeah i i and i'm not a fan of racing games um in general because <laughs> i'm pretty crap at them um, so i it, it uh, that that's that's music yeah no no racing no, no need to worry about that particular place so in i've made up a new scenario for you i like, I like even just in outside of this i like to give you scenarios <laughs> where you where you can't win but basically no man's sky has died you know but, it's been shut down hello games like now next week go sorry yeah. We can't do that. It's uh, Sony have, you know, they, they were financed us a little bit. They've pulled the plug. You know, we're just not, we're not interested. It feels like we sold out a little bit and Sean Murray walks away from the industry. So it's never getting revived. You've now, you're now left hovering and yeah. you're, look, you're looking for a new game to buy. Uncharted 4, you know, you can't, you can't buy that. It's out of stock. It's so popular. It's out of stock. So you, you're left with Doom or Overwatch. Yeah. Which one out of those two do you, do you go away and buy? Do you trust Blizzard? You've played a lot of their stuff. You know, you've played Hearthstone, Heroes of the Storm, that sort of thing. You know, they've yeah. got good pedigree from the from the side of, of World of Warcraft. Or do you do you go back old school and think, right, let me look over Gary's shoulder and start watching Doom 1993. Let's let's get some childhood he- memories back. Let's get this reboot <laughs> installed. Which Gary one? I loved that game. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people did and still do. So which one out of those two, if you had to, you know, this is now the, the situation you're in. No Man's Skies are gone, so you can't sit around and wait. These are the two options. So, which- so, so I would, I would say, what is everyone else getting? I'm gonna go with that. Um, well, okay. So in so, this, so, so, just, so it, it, right. I know the problem. So, like, all right, the other two of them, I see myself. I'd probably trust Blizzard. Um, because yeah. I played more of their games, uh, and I've actually played the the Doom beta, and yeah. I, I wasn't overly impressed. Though I'm I'm now my ears are more sort of pointing upwards now that that the campaign's pretty good. Yeah. But I I'd, I'd written off Doom pretty much before, right. before the the cat I'd heard about the campaign. So um, Overwatch, yeah, I, I was going to get by Overwatch as well. Yeah. Um, but that now I'm hearing that there are out of our group of friends people are buying it on on the box well um, you can buy box. mr hall for that yeah ish. so so that, that that's pro- that means krog go over that way yeah. and um and then i probably won't have anyone to play with so and then then it swings back do i go doom because i can play the campaign <laughs> yeah because <laughs> there's no campaign with overwatch as far as i'm aware no there's not i mean again um, that that is a that is a potential issue which people will forget about there are people in your boat where you think well it might not be anyone for me to play online with what else is this offering? So by default, Doom's pretty much won it. Yeah, because I, I I did that I did that with Star Wars and and once oh, people yeah. stopped playing it, it was just it just it just doesn't become fun because there's no campaign, so you just don't pick it up again. No. Um. So yeah, I'd say because the campaign's come out and and it's got some reasonable reviews, Doom would probably win it at the end of the day. There you go. Mr. Piper chooses Doom over Overwatch. Blizzard absolutely heads in their palms. Can't believe they've chucked <laughs> away an easy sale. By not going down a campaign route, even Battleborn had a campaign, but um, yeah, I'm you know out of those, it, Overwatch is pretty much looks like it's going to get bought, but unfortunately on the box yeah. at, this, at this rate, which is a, a shame for some people. But um, Doom is getting picked up as well for me at some point in the future. Like you said, it's not it's not an essential purchase now because I've still got games here that need to be done. Ones that you've even bought, we Transformers Devastation sitting. That needs to go on. Yeah, that's, you could get that done in, in a couple of evenings. I've got yeah, inside. I have heard that. That's that's that is going to be done at some point. And then the Witcher Three got DLC coming for that. Adds yeah. another thirty hours. That's another new game almost. Twenty yeah, quid. That's Twenty yeah. quid it was that DLC, and that gave me thirty hours in this new one and ten in the other one. Have they, have they expanded the world anymore? Is it just new things within uh, the world? Blood and Wine, which is the new one that drops either late this week or, or early next week, is a uh, is a new region. Oh, that's that's, cool. that's good then. That's really yeah. good. I like it when they add new regions into things. Yeah. It's it a bit more exploration. So yeah, I got that, and then Dying Light, which I'm really making very little progress on. So. But Doom's Doom's on there. Doom, like you said, if, if uh, it's gonna, I'm gonna get it for the campaign at some point and blast through that because it seems like it's gonna interest me. And Overwatch, I, we'll see. What I reckon will happen with Doom is, is we'll, I reckon it'll come down as I said in a couple of months, it'll be about twenty yeah. quid. There'll be one of us will buy it, and then there'll be about three or four of us buy it, and we'll all go on and we'll play a bit of the, the multiplayer as well as doing the campaign. Yeah, well, I think Hall is gonna get. He's looking at getting it anyway, but he. Hasn't bought as you as you discussed last week. He hasn't bought a new game for months, so it'd be interesting Games to see. Gold if he, for him. It, it literally is, and with them with them releasing 
their decent kind of games of gold liner, which is Goat Simulator. It was uh, good. This they, they've they've done. You know, Xbox for their gold uh, this month have pulled out some good games. They got XCOM, got uh, Goat Simulator, they got yeah. Super Meat Boy, and yeah. they was the crew. Uh, the crew, yeah. So, which, so they've, they've 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 actually done all right. Like they, they're not what you call sort of shit. Uh, you, triple a games but they're they're good games that are quite good fun i brought goat sim i've played that for about three four hours and that's just good fun you just you just i'd say to you download that and just put it on the evening yeah i will it's 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 just you just like you can't believe half the stuff is in it you're like suddenly you walk around the corner and suddenly you're in space or then (laughs) you go into a hole in the tree and suddenly you've you've opened like a massive castle and it's like what the hell is going on here and you jump on trampolines and you can blow up like petrol stations and yeah it's it's, and it's yeah it's just amazing that game like it's just for a bit of fun it's it's a good laugh i've heard good things about and also i mean the crew when that was released that was triple a tilted as but it just didn't fare well in the reviews and it was something that interested me until i played the beta and i thought i'm not paying for this because it it just didn't grab me enough but now that it's a games with gold and i can download it i'll have a crack at that being able yeah. to drive across all of North America, well, not all of North America, but a, you know, a condensed version of it seems like you know a way to even de-stress. Maybe if it can you do that as multiplayer drive across? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah so I you, think so you multi- Horn and Krog could just um, drive across could, North America, could do, do a road trip and stream it. Yeah, it could yeah, be. that'd be quite good fun. Actually, I'd watch that. Yeah, I think you're one of like four people in the world that would, but we, you know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll try we need out. to do another stream since you last did the other last successful one. Yeah, Turbo Track 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 Main Turbo that was, and yeah. I'm I'm thinking I'm trying to think of I'm looking at my stack and thinking there is something there that I can stream, but it'll be good. But we'll we'll think of something and try and get some more regular streams out, whether it's me or Hall or, or Logan or whoever else wants to have a go. We'll make sure that Twitch channel gets used. But I think we can draw this particular segment to a close, Mr. Piper. So thanks very much for joining me and uh, enjoy your trip away. Thank you very much. L T R, L T R. Logan the Reliable is back again. To, yep, to close out the podcast after being rested for one week. Good to have you back. We uh, we have actually recorded this part once already, <laughs> but it just tailed off into nonsense. Mainly me, I just lost <laughs> focus about twelve minutes in, and <laughs> we went on for about half hour. And and I, w- I think it was only in about minute 22 where I went, this ain't going to get in, is he? And you went, no. Right. <laughs> so I ended up canning that effort. This is a fresh start. And uh, it's good that we did delay it because something did develop, as I was hoping for. I was kind of in two minds of doing it earlier, but we have a official confirmation of one large piece of news, which we'll, we will get to. But let's kick things off with some Titanfall 2 rumours. So we've had a leak off of Reddit Let's claim that Respawn's sequel is going to include grappling hooks, which is going to aid you in traversal to get into Titans and even to pull enemies in midair towards you. The maps are going to be increased in size, which usually tends to happen when you move to a new generation. Obviously, Titanfall 1 or Titanfall the original was on 360 as well, so it had a requirement that it had to work and fit onto that console as well as the Xbox One. And finally, finally, the one part of the rumour is that they're going to be releasing this in October, which is the same month as EA's other big FPS this year, Battlefield 1. So let's break each of these rumours down one by one. Let's start with this grappling hook because we've seen grappling hooks in Uncharted. They work quite well. They're good fun. There's, there's, they're in uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider as well. They can be good fun. I've never really used them much in a in a first person game, but one of the things I liked about Titanfall the original was that the traversal was very slick, fast, and you know you had wall running, double jump, and all that. This could, to me, could potentially add another layer to this. You know, it's already dynamic when you're in when you're as a pilot. But w- would you be a fan of this if it was to be added, or is it as you? really don't want you've said multiple times is it piling shit on top yeah it's difficult i think as you're right they they do add another dimension they they are good fun to go around trying to hook onto different shit i quite like the idea of hooking onto an enemy tire and putting myself onto it yeah because you can often try and get on enemy titans get it fucking trampled on so yeah. i think you can it's a safer way of getting on them but mm-hmm. I think you've got to be very careful because, as you say, the pilot movement was already pretty quick, slick, and smooth um, on the original. I don't want to. I don't want it to be quicker 
by foot necessarily than getting in a Titan. Yeah. I think you've got to be very careful with it. And I don't want it to be a default offering. So if you want that extra maneuverability, then it's got to be at the uh, at the sacrifice of something else. So right. if you want that, then, for example, you can't have your rocket launcher to take down a Titan. You're then committed to going around. And, do you know what I mean? I, d- I just mm. think they need to be thinking about the balance of it rather than just going there there you go everyone have a little go with the uh with the grappling hook and then everyone's just fucking grappling around everywhere and you think you're safe and all of a sudden you've got this fucking grappling hook up your ass and you're going right because the one thing that annoyed me on the um on the beta for uncharted was people just running around with this one hit melee yeah and i don't want it to be like a one hit melee on you that it brings you do you know what i mean i just don't it's a bit of a botherance, but <clears throat> if they use it right, it, yeah. it'll be it'll be a good addition. Well, so you don't, so you basically like the wall running that comes as default. You know, your Titan can do that. You're saying you want this to be like an equipable item, almost not that you the yeah. stock the stock pilot can use off the bat. Yeah, I, I as I say, I, I think they got the balancing pretty good in the original. Time uh, to change. Well, is it though? I don't. But making things better isn't always about piling shit on, which is the drum I've been banging for years now. Um, mm. It's about mixing it up and trying new things, taking out stuff that didn't work, and and adding in something that might or change change the meta of the game, change the balance of the game a little bit. Grappling hook. That's what that'll do. Yeah, but Stop. if you give it to everyone, it doesn't. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like new it, skill to learn to master. Yeah. Love. and are they gonna can you grapple onto everything or can well you grapple onto buildings and where there's a because yeah. obviously on uncharted there was only certain grappable yeah items if that's the word we'll go yeah with, well but. that's what i'm using yeah but, i mean this plays almost nicely into the next point is that the maps are going to be increased but if the grappling hook is going to be there they have to fundamentally change the map design aren't they to allow the grappling hook to be successful and usable so yeah. they're gonna have to, like you said, they're gonna have to add points where you can string together a grappling hook onto a, a wall run, then grapple hook onto a tight. I mean, there's some interesting things they can do with this, and with the the map supposedly being increased, which is something that I expected, surely that's a good thing. They did it very well in the original, so there, there's a lot of places where you can wall run quite quickly, and they, they, it didn't feel disjointed. You can get onto walls and there's platforms and everything so i think they'll do that fine that that i'm not too bothered about i don't i don't know if bigger's better yeah so that's my one concern with these maps is they'll because everything's got a choke point anyway even with the maps as they were there were areas on it where you, you literally will never go or if you're there no one else is yeah so and i just feel like that would probably happen on this one as well so they give you this larger map but you still if they're still using the same number of people on it then you've mm. still got this th- these choke points in in certain parts and that's what i mean i feel like they'll put all this effort and as i said to you before with the call of duty maps is what made them so good is the variety and how playable they were yeah it wasn't because they were huge maps in fact some of the better maps were actually smaller yeah so crash uh, well, I was thinking sort of Newtown, town shipment sort of style uh, maps. Crash really was a map, yeah. Was it small? Uh, it, well, yeah, I suppose it was actually. It wasn't that big. That was the one with the helicopter in the middle. Yeah, I can't be remembering. I remember yeah, the names. They, they were pretty. They were pretty close quarters maps, to be fair. But it's a different type of game, really. Yeah. Um, but that's what. That's just the point I want to make is that, that I don't necessarily think just going. We're going to make everything bigger. Bigger is the is always the answer in these things. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's, it's all comes down to design, really. You know, perhaps bigger they mean they're going to be more dense with different routes and maybe that sort of thing. That would be more interesting to me. There's more kind of little routes for pilots to sneak in and get through rather than Death. just just yeah, you know, just mm. maybe some verticality. Yeah, because that's one thing it probably did lack a little bit, and understandably so because you've got mechs and they can only really stay on the ground but it'd be good if they could get another layer in a few of those and have some have some verticality because then that could play in again using the grappling hook can't it if that's yeah. that's going to be that's going to aid people to get up high and use it but like i said you don't want to be the whole the whole point was you're building up to get a you know a titan really 
although the balance was very good between the Pirates and the Titans, I personally found myself much more successful when I was in a Titan. And you don't want them to then be sort of frozen out on the ground floor whilst everyone's mm. up in the fucking clouds having a having a ruck. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, it's, it's obviously respawn. A lot of the guys from Infinity Ward moved over once they'd have fallen out of Activision, so they're not. I have faith in them. They're to not do the right things. Exactly. Yeah. They're not. They're not stupid by any means, and they proved it with Titan for one. October release is the next point. Now, I mean, we knew we knew it was coming before Christmas, and it was mm. going to be during this absolute manic session. And we we spoke about this, didn't we? Three four weeks ago, we was talking about how many FPS is going to be out during Christmas time in the run up to to the end of the year, holiday time. Mm. October is obviously going to be before Call of Duty, which typically comes out November, if I'm to be correct on this occasion. Yeah. Battlefield One as well. Is this is this EA? They publish both of these games, so they're they're in charge of like the marketing. They're probably in charge of the release date, providing the the dev team say, yeah, we can hit the deadline. Is this them just saying, let's get both our games out early and cash in before Call of Duty: The Juggernaut comes out? Even uh... even though it's got a very poor reception, isn't it? Infinite Warfare, most disliked trailer of all time, or something ridiculous when they release that. So people are not happy with Infinite Warfare. But it does have that little dangling carrot, doesn't it? The Legacy Edition with the remaster well, of COD 4. I've got a feeling they knew that this that this is a dying... Well, it's not dying. I think that's unfair. I, I think it's average, 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 yeah. average Joe goes out and buys Call of Duty every year. It's only really people that... Stupid people like us that do podcasts about gaming that probably don't play it anymore. But you look at the sales every year, fucking piss it. Yeah, it's, one, just, it's one of the best selling games still in there. Buying it, I don't, I don't know who's still buying it and genning up to max gen. I don't, I don't know, I don't know who's still doing that because it's not. It's just people that don't game, you know, in depth. They don't, they don't play games like The Witcher. They play games like FIFA, Madden. I mean, look, Call I am, a, I am a recent convert to a different style of gaming, but I even, even I, as a, as a Call of Duty, FIFA kind of casual gamer. Oh, I hate labelling that, but that's well, basically what I was doing. Yeah, it, I even was wising up to <laughs> what Call of Duty and what they were up to. <laughs> I was wising up. What? So, <laughs> what are they doing? They're fucking stealing your money every year. They can't, <laughs> don't they? Literally, FIFA uh, doing it as well. I have just got mm-hmm. FIFA 16 basically for four pound. The Vault. Yeah, yes. well, whenever we'll talk about it in a couple of weeks, I want to see how that's going. But yeah, that's one of the games that's on this uh, EA Access, which is And good. I literally feel like I've got one over on them. Because I'm just <laughs> like... Because oh. there, there is literally... Be- I, I got the right ump with it at first. We're going off on a tangent. Yeah, that's fine. Um, I got the right ump with it at first. I thought, right, what have they done? Um, this is fucking poor. And then I've, I feel like I've sort of got the hang of it. But really, when you bo- boil it down to it, it's almost just a few tweaks with how the game plays and yeah. updated squads. Right. And you want £45 for that. Yeah. I ain't doing that FIFA, which is why I haven't bothered buying it this year. No. And why I've now got it for £4. Yeah. For the month. Per and month. If I play it, well, if I pay it any longer, then I might just carry on. But even if I paid it, even if I played it for a year on a monthly basis, I've basically got it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, yeah. And I just think, right, we're paying full price for these titles, and they're not thirty-eight pound anymore. They're going, they're up forty-two, forty-four. Yeah. If you even download it, it's fifty-five quid, really. It's so it's a yeah. lot of money every year to be investing, and they're not giving enough back. And that is what Call of Duty are doing. They're fucking struggling because they're doing this stupid yearly release, <laughs> which is just completely unnecessary for most games. Yeah. Just to cash in on the consumer. That is all it is. It is a massive cash cow. And I can't blame the company for doing it, but as a consumer, you've got to know better. Yeah. And that's what I've done. I've wised up to it. Wised up to it. So let's go back to October then. Yeah. We mentioned that regardless of how we feel, Call of Duty is probably going to sell. I still think it's going to sell well. Despite all those down votes, that is still a tiny subset of people that, that as you say, maybe have wised up. It might be one of the best ones, selling ones ever. That that deluxe version. Well, if they, well, that's the trouble now, isn't it? It's, there is dilemmas for people, and the, the thing is, the people will get it, and whether it's whether it's us or whether it's people that, it might be people getting it on behalf of others. They go, oh no, Johnny likes Call of Duty. I'll just get it because there's a lot of gift giving. Yeah. At that time of year, isn't it? It's, it's that time of year where 
Nana goes, right, what, what, what does Jim want? And he goes, well, I think he plays Call of Duty. And she's like, oh, it's a bit violent. And they're like, no, he's fine, he's mature. He's only he's only cut the cat once. He would be fine if you get him that. And they go out and get it for him because it's an easy buy. Everyone knows what Call of Duty is, even people that don't play games. Yeah. Well, it's I've, that big. It is. It's, yeah. you know, people have been chatting about it for a long time. And people that, as I said, they might only play two games a year, and that's definitely one of them. Poor and Medal of Honor got binned for this. Yeah. Don't, we shouldn't fool ourselves into thinking that the 40 million people that own a PlayStation 4 all play The Witcher, or all play Metal Gear Solid, or all play Fallout. Maybe Fallout's actually one that does cross over slightly. But most of those people play the big games, they play the, the well known heavily marketed games yeah. what's on telly they don't look in they don't go into things as in depth as what we do I'm not saying we're like connoisseurs by any point but we, we must spend a lot of time reading about the industry itself and mm. and, and what's out there they're not going to pick up an indie game for example they're going to play the big releases that they know yeah and that's that's what makes up the bulk of the sales really there's yeah. no there's no way a game like freaking fucking what's name struggling here well Uncharted will sell well but it won't sell as many as something like FIFA on the on the PS4 nowhere near no because there's just not that, not that market for it anyway back to October really got up his nose yeah what are <laughs> is this smart for me eh, just to get it out there before because oh, I think that's what it is it's get it out before COD because it's a cost otherwise I've been thinking about this um... it's a bit early for a gift giving sign as well you're not going to buy something in October for December I reckon they've just looked at it and gone, right, are these people going to cross over? So are the Call of Duty people going to go, do you know what, I fancy a bit of Battlefield or are they going to fancy a bit of Titanfall? Do they know that the people that want it are going to buy it regardless of whatever else is out there? And I reckon that's probably what they've gone for. They've gone, right, let's just get it out there. Yeah. Christmas, console bundles, done. It's sorted. I reckon so. I don't think they'd. I like. I am sniffing around all. Ah, say all three. Well, Probably the least Call of Duty. But the only reason I'm anywhere near that is because of that Call of Duty for yeah. remaster. Otherwise, I'd be just binning it again. But <laughs> I, I still think that as much as I want that remaster, I am more and more thinking that I might just. It's going to come out. I reckon on its own relatively quickly and by quickly I mean probably next year sometime so you're hoping to hold out so with all right so with what is going on this year so at the moment Overwatch is going to happen yeah No Man's Sky is going to happen yeah and I'm, I'm Titanfall 2 is going to happen right and I'm increasingly thinking that Battlefield one is going to happen. So they look so, it's going to be the games. That will take me up. And that's if there's anything that hasn't gone under my radar that I'll, I'll make a last minute decision to actually go out and get as well. So yeah. I'm thinking there's probably four bankers almost before the end of the year. Yeah. Frank. And I can't remember where I was going with this. No. It doesn't matter now, does it? It'll <laughs> come to the end. I think my point was that... <laughs> I have made the decision already to get probably Titanfall 2 and Battlefield 1 anyway. Regardless of how close they are in release. That's <laughs> yeah. not a problem for you. I guess that's what the where I was driving at. Is is that an issue for yourself? And could it be an issue for consumers? You're saying probably not. It's going to be a bit of overload. And it feels like it's overload. but Quite different. One one you can fucking grapple in at one set in World War 1. Morbid exactly. weapons that are... It's going to be different. One's enough. going to be a bit slower. One's yeah. going to be a bit faster. So they're a bit different, and Overwatch will probably be dead by then as well. So that <laughs> I hope be not. Fucking, I'm going to go buy that today. Apparently, <laughs> no. So I think that will still be lurking. I think that will be a good one to keep picking up. But I, 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 that's what I mean. I think I've made that decision anyway, and they'll market both games very heavily. I yeah. anticipate that they'll they'll be both really well received mm. and. I've got no problem with buying both, but it is a. If I was EA, I'd still be going. Mm, that's dangerously close to that Call of Duty, which they're yeah. it's going to sell heavily. So I would be considering it. You get out first, though. You get an advantage, is what I say. Because... Well, I would probably say they 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 should be looking at not even October, September for one of these. Wow. I think a two month period is. It depends how much people are going to actually look at it. It's that gift giving, isn't it? 
that gift giving get gift giving october is probably the last date where you can expect to get that in, for christmas and not feel like it's really old like september people be like mm, don't know about that maybe it's a worry for them but anyway titanfall yeah june 12th worldwide release so we'll know if all this is bollocks anyway then we'll find out more details it looks like it's got a sword in it as well so melee mech action to come for titanfall that's titanfall wrapped up big news it's come out pretty much just confirmed today almost we're recording this on the saturday so this obviously drops on a sunday and during the the evening during the nights of friday and on saturday uk time Sean Murray has posted on PlayStation.com. Delay news! No Man's Sky coming to PS4 in August. Yep. So Murray's come out and said it's delayed, basically. Yeah. Now, I was tempted to read what he's written here, but I, I won't. I'll just pick out the main details of it. So what I find, I've, I've read through the whole statement. Essentially, I'm paraphrasing and absolutely translate it wrong for people and give them misinformation. <laughs> but he's quite positive about it. The game's come together really nicely. And the, the, this is in the first sentence, actually. This is probably all you need to know. The game, is, the game has really come together, and it's an incredible relief. So it almost feels like it's done. Like they've yeah. got over a big hump they were worried about or there's something that was bothering them. It feels as though it's pretty much ready. So and he's saying, I can, I'm can. i watching people play test it every day. I can finally let myself get excited. We're actually doing this. And what they've basically said, they've tipped it down to just polishing it up, extra polish to bring it up to their standards, whatever that may be, which I hope is a higher standard. Uh, so they've made the, the, the choice to delay it. <laughs> he's play he's a bit funny with words though we made the choice to delay the game for a few weeks now the actual <laughs> delay is august the 9th in america august the 10th in europe and august the 12th in uh in the uk so anything over a month to me doesn't count as a few weeks i'm not having that sure and that is absolute marketing bollocks there trying to really under undercut it first off why is it why is a uk developed game coming out in north america earlier August the 9th we get it August the 12th here and even the rest of Europe get it in August the 10th maybe they're anticipating Brexit so that's one problem you might get from that Logan if UK leave the EU do we get games later uh, I don't know well that's a political question for another day but that's something, <laughs> that's something for the listeners to consider who are based in the UK just think about that when you're putting your vote in come the end of June I was the rumours were circulating this week um, we I, that's why I held off from recording this piece. I wanted it confirmed. It was there was there were quite strong rumours. I was expecting to hear something concrete. We've got the concrete evidence. You said something interesting when we was chatting about it. I'll let you take it away about project managers and whatnot. Yeah. Your thoughts on this short but you know annoying delay on No Man's Sky. Yeah. Um, I'm okay with it. I have got no problem. Right. It's frustrating, but. Pepper I was livid. Rather, Pepper is livid, which is a good reason for it to be delayed anyway. <laughs> um, but my too often nowadays, you see people just trying to get it out there. We'll deal with it when it's done, or yeah. we'll take that as a day two item. Or you, you hear it, or well, I do anyway. I hear it all the time, and even in in work, that my experience has been just get it out, get it done. We'll deal with some other shit afterwards, and it's just a f- so frustrating. Yeah. And it's nice to see people actually taking pride in it and going, do you know what? We're actually not happy with how it is at the minute. It's playing, but there's obviously some stuff that they want to iron out that, so that when they release it, the world goes, cool. right, core, yeah. rather than going, core, but, but they've done that. <laughs> yeah. So I'd rather them do that if they can than be under pressure by the publisher just to go, do you know what? Just just get out there. Just We'll, yeah. we'll deal with that later. And yeah. I I am just pleased actually that he takes such pride in this game mm. and that he's willing to go we'll put it back yeah so that we can get out there how we want and I've seen a couple of interviews with him and I've seen uh, I I've, I've been deliberately dehyping this well I've been deliberately dehyping this <laughs> over the time Actively. I've been actively dehyping it so that I can go right and be surprised <laughs> by it when it mm. comes out and um, I've watched about five minutes just to get an idea or a flavour of the game. Yeah. And Sean Murray was playing it. Yeah. 
and you can tell that when he's playing it he just wants to show it to you he wants to show this off to you mm. he wants to go look at what we have done here this mm. small team from the UK we have done this amazing game in feet mm-hmm. and I really applaud that and it feels a bit more personal it's genuine and it feels genuine yeah and it feels like they are proud of what they've done and that they are taking a personal interest in getting this to be as best as good as it can be yeah. and I think that has to be saluted because we have said so many times I think it even goes back to Assassin's Creed or yeah. all these games that come out with Mass talk about with COD yeah chuck it out and you know the one thing actually you said about having pride of the game I read a quote weeks ago when they first announced Infinite Warfare mm. and someone from is either it might have been Activision or Infinity War I can't remember someone can correct me although they won't um <laughs> Someone said, they said, I asked the question, do you care if people pick up the uh, the Legacy Edition and don't play Infinite Warfare? And his answer was no. <laughs> no. So, yeah. the, I can't believe that's true, but that's the sort of attitude that you kind of it kind of resonates back with some of these bigger, big bad companies that do massive projects and whatnot. It doesn't yeah. feel like there's much... I'm sure they are proud of what they produce, but... This is a different level because of how small and intimate the team is, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I don't know how big it is, but I keep saying to Pepper that it's 10 men in a shed. Um, I, don't think, I don't think that's even wrong. Yeah. I think that's actually pretty much what it is. And uh, to for them to be even being muttered about so much and for everyone to be so disappointed, for it to be such a big bit of news, yeah. it's just testament, really, to, I think, what the job that they're going to be doing with this game. Yeah. I don't... I, even if it, it doesn't meet maybe what we're expecting, I still think that from what these guys have done, these 10 men in a shed, yeah. to get this almost the hype of a AAA title, I think it's phenomenal. And the fact that I wish more game companies would go, do you know what, we're really excited, we, we really love this idea that we've got, we've been nurturing it. Yeah, We are sitting here, we are doing this ourselves and do you know what we could release it but we're not happy with it yeah so we're not gonna gonna. and i I think i really like that attitude and i don't i like the idea that once i've received it this is not their heart and soul into it but this is how they want it released not how a publisher wants it released. sure yeah so absolutely i think it's good news really in a, yeah. in, it's not often that we say that delay news is good news, but delay news. Forgot about that. Yeah, blown, blown it. That. That's the biggest one as well. Biggest bit of delay news since we've been doing this. <laughs> what superimpose it on edit? <laughs> <laughs> so that can be easily arranged. But yeah, I mean, we're going back to the size of the team. When they first announced it, there was four people working on it. That first ever announcement. And now it's up to thirteen. Yeah. So phenomenal sort of facts that we can get on the fly as well. Yeah, that is that is mad. So yeah, I mean, I've got no problem with it. Unless they delay it into next year because it will cost fantasy, <laughs> and then Sean Mai will get a strong email. That's what it comes down to. <laughs> this, yeah. that's what it comes down to because it looks like none of halls are going to slip. Which, you know, the only, the only one I can see is maybe Pokemon Go. But well, uh, I'm out of it anyway. You're out of the run. Well, you know what I saw earlier that they, that they, they've mentioned that the Last Guardian is definitely coming out this year. Yeah, but they keep saying it, but it's like it's Mass it's not Effect, isn't it? Sniffed out. Yeah, Mass Central Effect Mandela. is definitely 2017. Gone. It's yeah. gone. So unless me and Hall both have a dropout, it's it's over with. But we have to we have to think of a way of rearranging that. But yeah, that's the only concern for me on a selfish note is now that you said August hit August, and if it's just polishing they need to do, if that's what he says and it's true, then that to me sounds like it's doable. Mm. In my eyes, yeah, I agree. S- still not happy with this release date coming out days later, so I don't know what that's all about. Yeah, it's a bit weird. They must be getting it. I mean, what what gets staggered anymore? Like most things are worldwide Tuesday, aren't they? Yeah, you know what I mean, it's a weird. I mean, distribution problems. I don't know. I don't really. Uh, anyway, it's just Brexit. It at le- if it was well, if it was that, <laughs> it should at least be available on the store on the same day. Again, well, that's another good point. With, with digital, there's no need for any. <laughs> Staggered releases. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand that, but no. I, I, I'm not that close to it to understand how it actually the the the, uh, the logistics of it. Yeah. So. Well, there you go. There we go. I think we're reasonably satisfied with this, and I think as the more delay news we do, the more we kind of go get it right. Don't bung it out in a mess like the fucking Unity was. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't going... it's frustrating, but it's for the best. Yeah, the only thing that bothers me about this is it's in August now, and I'm pretty sure that one of my other games that I really wanted to play over that time, Deus Ex, yeah, I remember you is, come, is coming out at that sort of time. That's the 23rd of August, so you know I'll get a little bit of time with it, but I ideally wanted the month cleared out. I'd like to have had No Man's Sky in June because... To be honest, the only other thing I can see myself buying, apart from Overwatch, is Doom at the moment. Yes. Uh, it's, it's a quiet time always over the summer, typically. And that would yeah, have been, that'd have been yeah. one that you could really lose yourself in over the summer months. But it's going to come at the end of summer now, just as things are kicking off again. But I yeah, it's going to... I'm still thinking I might have to put something back into 2017. I don't know what yet. Well, I'm just a bit concerned about how bunched up it's getting. That's the trouble. This would have been nice in June, but if it's going to play better, it's going to run better, it's going to be how they want it, and it's going to be successful. Then I've got no qualms with that. One last piece to wrap up on. This is a surprise for you because I didn't uh, didn't, <laughs> didn't actually brief you on what I was going to talk about here. So if I I'm going to read you a sentence, and I want to see yeah. if you can piece together mm-hmm. why it's relevant, if it's even relevant. Ready at dawn to announce their second game next week. So when I say that, is that what game is essentially is their first game is what I'm trying to get at. Oh, um, judging by this is surprise, I should know. <laughs> You're having a laugh, aren't you? Five seconds and then I'll tell you the answer. I mean, all it's doing is proving a point to me. Five seconds are up. Um, <sighs> the Order 1886. Oh, forgotten about already <laughs> just immediately I, that, I, that I would not have got that if you'd have given me <laughs> half an hour it won't get in done uh, longer <laughs> I reckon if you'd have given me two days a week I would have, have not got that you got the case over there you could have gone and picked it up and just read ready at dawn uh, it. yeah right okay <laughs> but yeah so they're going to announce then the, the second game next week which obviously we drop on a Sunday so it's you know it could be Monday Tuesday when it could you know it could be days away yeah now they're actually no longer being helped or funded by Sony oh. so it's, it's being published by GameStop Ooh. so that's the big obviously US uh, retailer like the biggest Spears. one over there yeah well they've opened up their own game publishing label which we didn't actually cover when it was actually announced we didn't know much details but they've announced a few games for it yeah uh, but Reddit at Dawn were one of the guys that signed for it so it's called the Game Trust label I don't know when I mean, this is a separate conversation but I'm not sure if there's a conflict of interest there having a an out and out retailer publishing games well yeah I mean how how happy are they going to be with other retailers well yeah are they even going to be available yeah, you know it's a bit of a weird. I mean, when it starts kicking off, we'll we'll certainly have a look into that. But they've had, you know, there's there's other developers like Insomniac and and people like that that have committed games to to do it. I don't think I'm not sure if it's an exclusivity deal. Like they can only develop for them, but they've certainly signed up on a per game basis. So I would expect they'll at least get first dibs. Oh yeah, absolutely. So this was this news of a new game being done by Ready at Dawn was shared during a, a call to investors which is often where a lot of these leaks come out of it's these investors I don't know who's on them going oh they must just, people must just buy shares in places to listen to these calls and be like ah right I'll report that to the, to the news people <laughs> the question is now you've got the order 1886 got a really harsh reception I say harsh it wasn't I binned it I didn't think it was particularly good it was graphically impressive but those letterboxings that we've definitely 100% confirmed are in the game you know sort of peg it back a little bit graphically and then when you see Uncharted 4 you go well come on mm-hmm. level, talk about levels yeah. what would you like to see them do If would you even like to see would you even play anything they produce would you want to see a follow up to the Order 18-6 was the, was the setting there enough to think well actually there's something that something good could come of this if I they... do like steampunk. Yeah. Because that's it was, what it was. Really. I like steampunk and I like an alternative history, sort of mm. set in realism, but in a different timeline almost, where yeah. it's real places but with different technology. Yeah. And I quite I, I quite like the way that they pulled Tesla in and yeah. a few bits like that from history. And I quite I, I like that. I like I like most of it. I just feel like disappointedly. I just feel like the gameplay just wasn't that good. Well, it wasn't. No. That's the thing. Um. So uh, I, do, I don't really know what I'd want them to do. This is the trouble sometimes. I go right. That hasn't quite made it, but I, I don't really know what to say to them to do it better. 
Mm. I think if it so if they had that sort of setting, but yeah. it was a bit more how Uncharted played, and that the world was a bit more accessible mm. than they've because the one thing I felt the the order was was very very linear. Oh yeah, it was. That's, like, that's middle name. Like it, it was so linear at times that I just thought, right, you've got it looks so good that everything's done so well, mm. but I kind of want to see a bit more. I want that rich backstory. Yeah. I want to be able to have a little potter. I don't want to be under pressure to move through that building all the time. I want to see what's in there, what's going on. Yeah. Like, well, I, I, I don't. That's the one thing I didn't really like about it as well. Is it, it just felt too linear. So, yeah. I'm reluctant to say open world, but I'd like I'd like them to stick with that steampunk because I don't think there's a lot of that going on. No, it's so interesting at least that scene. Mm. But It'd be I'll, interesting to see where they go. I yeah. don't think there'll be a follow-up to this because it's been associated with bad reviews now. <laughs> yeah, well, that is the cost for that for that particular franchise, is that it's off to a bad start and maybe one that can't be recovered. Um, I mean, that is that is pretty much my, my thoughts summed up in it, Ready at Dawn. I, one thing I can almost guarantee is they're not going to spend... The, the same sort of investment that Sony put into them for the order is not getting spent here. Oh, absolutely so, not. So I don't know what no, I, the I would be surprised if it would be a temp. Yeah. You wonder like, whether they'll completely scale it back. You know, maybe it will be not an indie game, but a very... I struggle to see them putting something with the the, the, the graphical grunt out that the order had. Mm. Uh, and they're going to have to go down a lot more of a, an, an efficient route because they're not going to have the money, I don't see. No one's don't No one's paying them to do that. I don't know how much money they might have had left over, whether they might have had a, a couple of other projects. Sony, any money left over, Sony have taken, I reckon, and gone, well, we've financed that, and <laughs> that's what you've given us. You didn't even give us reflection in mirrors, for fuck's sake. No, they didn't. They didn't. Still, that was one of your pet hates. Still eights. bothers me. Wow. I, even in Uncharted, I checked if they had mirror reflections. Yeah, I had to. Yeah. I don't know why that's become my thing now. It is, that's, 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 that's the measuring stick, and if it hasn't got reflections, it ain't worth having. I don't know, it just it bothers me. And I checked it, and it was a dusty mirror, but I could see a brief reflection, so I was like, right, you get off with that Uncharted. Yeah. Well, there's actually, in, in his, like, ugh, well, there are parts where there's other mirrors, but there's there are clear-cut mirrors in there as well. I checked them as well. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I like yeah. a little look. <laughs> it makes me laugh how sometimes we've got these same little things that we've got to do. Yeah. Uh, right, I've got to test the realism. Yeah. Do I get a reflection in the mirror? Like, that is that is the test somehow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it passed the test. Intr- so we'll find out, I guess, next week what Reddit, or in a few days, what Reddit Dawn are up to. And it'll be interesting to see what they do. Uh, I'm not completely written them off, but they got off to... A, you know the first major game you'd say Bumpy. backed by Sony, Sony like a PS4 exclusive system seller, and then it come out to a, a really bad reception. Really, and if that was sold as a release game, you'd be fine with it. You'd be fine with it. Exactly. It just come out at the wrong time Fuck for it. it. And I can't remember if it was even due to be a release date, but that's one of my one of my points was that I felt like it was a, a launch game just came out far too late, like eighteen months after the release of the console it just wasn't good enough yeah at that level you know, you know rise i think you played through rise i've not yeah, played yeah. it but that was a launch game yeah so you kind of give it a little bit of Leeway. slack yeah and that was okay that was fine yeah it looked good um but it was just basic yeah i mean it used to be that you know back in the playstation 2 not xbox original days that they would actually have good release games i'm pretty sure mm. halo launched with the original xbox you just don't get that yes. anymore. You just don't get yeah. that sort of level of of, uh, of release date. It's, it's just, weird, you isn't kind it? Of, you kind of buy it knowing that the first few games you buy... are going to be third, toilet. Yeah, you'll get FIFA and, and COD, which will be upscaled. Yeah. But the rest of it, you're going to go, well, it won't be... You ain't going to pick and keep that for years and then go, that's a classic. It's just, I expect they used to design for the console. Like they, they, It used to be a big thing where they could... The jump was so big that they'd have to go, right, we, yeah. this is what we got now. This is what you can do. Build a sank for us to yeah. market this with. And now they know that people will buy it. So they go, right, well, wait. <laughs> we can just do a few remasters, chuck out a tech demo, job done. Yeah, I agree. Anyway, let's wrap this toilet up. <laughs> Uh, what we're going to do let's do it in one go again so YouTube Facebook Twitter all slash Dimp Digital <laughs> so there's content on the YouTube channel you can obviously go to our Facebook page or tweet us at those addresses 
website dimpdigital.com the one stop shop well I say that it, it does stuff does go up there a bit belated but you will find all of our gear on there all the new stuff it just might come up a few days later so for example Logan's The Division Review I haven't put up yet but it's been out on YouTube for about three days <laughs> so sometime it's worth checking in on the YouTube channel but the website I'll try and update quicker and obviously if you're listening to this and you haven't subscribed subscribe and if you need an app to download on Android Player FM is a pretty good one to get if you're on Apple or Windows we're also on pretty much every other device so Windows just, binned well, wind, well that, at this point Windows phones will be binned and that is unsurprising since they've got about a 2% market share and we've been saying it for weeks I've been saying it I don't know what you're doing with your life you've got one of them <laughs> And now Windows themselves, Microsoft have just gone, yep, yeah, I don't know what we're doing with our lives. Just get rid of that because it ain't going anywhere. <laughs> Unbelievable. That's it for now, though. Game over. It's goodbye from Logan. Ta-da. It's goodbye from me, Apps. Thanks for your time. And ta-da. It's, uh, it's been a little while since we've had you on, so we might as well have a quick catch-up whilst we're here. What have you been? What have you been up to apart from obviously counting down the days until No Man's Sky? We are less than a month away from that. Yeah, um, well, we've just gone past that that landmark, twenty fourth. <laughs> on the day we're recording, it's the twenty fifth of May. So twenty fourth of May was exactly one month to No Man's Sky, and yeah, that's that is all I'm focused on at the moment. It's, I'm even so that much focused. I'm out reading sci fi fiction books. <laughs> I did see. I saw this on your Twitter account, and I was going to yeah. I was going to retweet the Dimp Digital account, but I forgot. But so what, <laughs> what is this have any relation to No Man's Sky? Is it just that you want to get in the sci-fi mood? I, I it's pretty much just these books. I, I picked up specifically these these books. They're by Stephen Baxter, really worth a read. Right. They're all about space exploration and mm-hmm. about these people from Earth going off exploring space and stuff like that for the first time. And it their books are amazing. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I purely picked them up to get me in the mood for, for no man's sky <laughs> yeah, uh, what, what, yeah. what are these what are these titles called you, can you show so the, the, names? The, the first i think the first book's called proxima or something yeah. like that and the second one's called ultima or ultima or something like that that's i've just started the second book now and yeah. um, finished the first one in about the space of a month right. uh, you know to and from work you know yeah using, using that time to, to read that but yeah now it's making me that bit more pumped for um for no man's sky and the reason <laughs> that i was <laughs> reading the books is because no Man's Sky mm-hmm. uh, consistently talk about how much influence they've had from sort of sci-fi novels and, yeah. and so forth and old sure. sort of like 80s books and stuff like that and, and covers and stuff like that. So it, I just wanted to get myself into the mindset of, you know, the developers yeah. before going into the game. Because I, I don't want to go in with those really high expectations of, like, I don't know, Star Wars and all oh, that, right, that happening yeah, in the course. rapid battle scenes and stuff like that. I want to yeah. get in the mind of you know, space exploration, which is hopefully what No Man's Sky will be. Sure. Who, who's the author? Just one more time for the guys at home. Stephen Baxter. He's Steve. done some stuff with Terry Pratchett as well. He's pretty big. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he's, he's worth he's worth a read if you like a bit of sci-fi. Yeah, well, that's what you don't normally get on the podcast is some <laughs> tips for the well-rounded gamer. So anyone that is a bit of a reader out there, Stephen Baxter's your man. Two particular sci-fi books.